Welcome to the CES meeting. It is December 14th. Was my millennial pause long enough? I think it might have been. Um, uh, today's topics are, uh, well, we have one topic. We're going to uh, discuss interaction between Shadow Realm and unhandled rejection and maybe even uncaught exception. Um, I think we're starting with unhandled rejection because it's more fun. Uh, I think we should start with the other one first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, fair. Fair. <laughs> okay. Let's do the easy one and then the fun one. Sounds good. Okay. Um, I can I can give you a brief description of the issue. So if you are running, if you have code running inside a shadow ROM and somehow you uh, trigger the an error. Uh, uh, during evaluation and during uh, an importing value. So whether you dot evaluate or dot import value, those are you're gonna get uh, the proper notification and so on because you are the initiator of the operation from the incubator round. Um, but uh, there might be uh, other, uh, if you, sorry, if you um, get a handle on a function, a wrap function, from the shadow, from the shadow realm, um, you might invoke that function at any given time, and you are free to use a try catch on the incubator realm to capture the error if the error occurred. And of course, you're gonna get a copy of that error, not the actual error, and so on. Uh, so all that works wonderful, no problem there. The problem is when the code running in, in the shadow realm triggers an error at a later time. So for whatever shape or form, you can have some code inside the shadow ROM that triggers an error later on. And therefore there's no try cache in that case. And it could be that is triggered by code that is uh, invoked from within the shadow ROM itself. So you're not going to get a, a stack trace that will, that will in, include the outer ROM or the incubator ROM in this case. So in those cases, how can you capture the error that happens inside the shadow realm? Uh, there are two approaches that we have talked in the past. One approach is to provide a new API on the shadow realm that allow you to capture those kind of a, 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 a API dot errors or whatever, whatever the API will be uh, from the actual shadow realm object itself. And then if the error occurs, you're gonna get a copy of it, but you, you capture that, that's one thing. So you, as the creator of the shadow realm can listen for errors that happen there that are not captured by the, by the code running inside the shadow realm. That's one approach. Um, a, a, a different approach, which is what the web is doing today, is to have a mechanism where you listen for errors and the mechanism that exists today, which is uh, using the window dot, um, what's the API, Matthew, the on error? error? Um, it's on that error. an error for an uh, error event. So it, it, it triggers an error event um, on the actual window. In this case, the incubator ROM is a window. So you capture that if you have an error at any level down into sub shadow ROM, you will be able to capture a copy of that error at that time. Um, that helps a little bit more. It's just a more generic API that give you a little bit more power than those that you can create by using the shadow realm instance itself. Why? Because you will be able to observe arbitrary errors at any level without the intervention of the creator of the shadow realm instance. Otherwise, every shadow realm instance that you create create, you have to put some sort of condition there, some sort of provision to capture the error and then forward that error somehow uh, in the incubator realm. But that makes it a little bit more difficult. You have something global, then you just do that thing. No matter how many shadow realms you create, uh, no matter how, how deep they are, you're going to get an error. And therefore, you will be able to capture the, the stack trace, you'll be able to send that information to the server if you have any kind of telemetry or something like that. Um, but you're effectively leaking everything that happens inside those, those shadow realm 
to the incubator realm. Uh, I don't have any particular uh, opinion on these. I think the more generic one is, will be better. Um, the conditions are there already, the API exists. It's just a matter of surfacing these errors that are happening in general realms into the main window, the root window, as we call it in the spec, so they can get a copy of that error and then everything should be fine. The event that you get is from the main window anyway, so you, you, you don't necessarily have to expose the event type inside the, the, the shadow ROM or anything like that. You're gonna get it only on the root window. Um, now, there is one more thing about this, which is then you're creating sub shadow ROMs. You don't have a way for the intermediate ROM to actually capture what's happening inside. Um, if that API is not exposed, but then Matthew came up with the idea that eventually we can add that API to Shadow Realm, just like the main window observe things that are happening um, in all Shadow Realm, you'll be able to observe errors that are happening in any of your child realms. That's kind of an API that we can introduce on the global object of all, any Shadow Realm that you create. That's an, another alternative there to cover even more, more cases. And these are not binary. You can go with all of them if you want. So you want to implement an on error on the shadow realm instance, that's fine. If that doesn't preclude uh, or affect in any way the possibility to also use the root window as the um, place to capture all errors. So you can do telemetry and so on. So that's where we are right now. Matthew, if there's anything that I'm missing there, go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to uh, give a little bit more context and uh, also uh, prior arts. So obviously this is a, uh, this is probably a host integration uh, issue. There is no uh, unhandled uh, or uncut error reporting mechanism defined in, uh, in 262. Uh, so on the web, uh, it goes to the event mechanism uh, that the web has. So it, as uh, Carrie explained, it's uh, it's an event that is dispatched by uh, the window. Uh, the window, which is also the global object. Um, so it, it, it happens that you can add an event listener on the global object itself because the global object is a window. So you just do add event listener uh, uh, uncover. Um, I believe this is the same thing uh, that happens in the workers. In the workers, the uh, global object is also an event uh, emitter. Uh, and so you similarly uh, can add this event. Uh, interestingly, workers have this notion of if the uncaught error is not handled in the worker, you can add a, a listener in, uh, in a worker, but if it is not handled there, uh, then it will be the error will be copied and then re uh, dispatched on uh, on on the parent context, which might be another worker or it might be the the, the root window that ended up creating that worker. Um, so there is already a mechanism in uh, defining on the web prior art on the web where you can listen for global error in in your agent uh, in this in that case for a worker. Uh, and if that agent doesn't handle them, uh, it will be uh, re, it's not rethrown, but it's re-dispatched on, uh, on, on the parent uh, agent. Um, the difference for Shadow Realm is the global object is not an event emitter. Um, so my suggestion, as uh, Carrie uh, mentioned, was to add a global something like a global uh, errors uh, object, which is an event emitter, uh, and on which you could uh, register for those uh, for those events. Uh, could be another name if it wants if we wanted to do uh, other things. Um, I guess one question uh, that uh, browser vendors had was like, do we actually want that, or if, like, do we want the yeah, for the ability of Shadow Realm uh, to cache their own uh, uncaught errors. And in my opinion, it should be yes, because again, it's it's a matter of like, it's really hard. You just have to cache the error on, uh, on the, if you don't have that, you have to cache the error on the root realm. 
somehow figure out that error is associated with the realm uh, in which it happened and then pass it back in so that uh, you can, can be handled there. And it's not a simple question of uh, like, hey, maybe you can just catch all the errors somehow, because as Carrie mentioned, there are sometimes no way to catch those. Uh, one example, I'll, I'll throw one on the, on there. Like you, like you could imagine trying to wrap all the host functions that allow you to create a new empty stack. Uh, but one of them that you cannot wrap is a finalization registry. So a finalization registry, if you throw in the uh, callback, uh, the finalizer callback, um, the host will report that using the the regular host mechanisms, and there is no way to wrap well i mean i guess you could wrap the finalization registry and wrap all the callback handlers but it it becomes like one of those virtualization questions again how do you make sure you can uh, you can catch all the errors that would have been unhandled uh, and, and report them yeah and, and so that's a pretty good uh explanation i think the there is no provision that i that i know of that will prevent the host to make the global object of a shadow realm a event target just like it is on the on the workers and on the web it's basically they should be able to make to be able to make it a, a an event target if they want to without affecting the wording that we have in the spec today which is the the object itself the global object itself should be uh, should, should not be especially in any, in any, in any way to be a, um, what do we say about the prototype chain of the global uh, object in the shadow realm? Uh, you you might need to change that, that prototype, but if it is uh, the only condition that we have in the spec is that you could change that prototype if you want back to whatever you want. So it cannot be right now it is unforgeable on the web. So you cannot modify that prototype. What we're saying is that you can the host can do whatever the host wants, but it can not be uh, um, unfortunate. Okay, so basically, we're saying like the host could install uh, whatever slots it wants on the global object that makes it an event target. Uh, it can put the prototype of an event target in there if it wants to. Uh, we can remove that. We wouldn't be able to remove the slots, but uh, we can anything that would be trying to use those slots, we can still virtualize them fairly easily. Yeah. Okay. I still think it's cleaner not to have the global object be an event target, but you know. <laughs> is in the workers is the global object an event target, or do you have to use self dot add event listener? Is is a is a is uh, event target is on the prototype chain of the global object in workers. Interesting. Okay, so they did they, they perpetuated that thing. Yeah. By the way, talking about like global things, uh, that's that might be an extra topic we can talk about, like the all the uh, weird functions that exist on the global, like the A to B or uh, um, fetch or things like that. Anyway, um, yeah, the only wording that we have is that the global object must be an ordinary object. That's it. Cannot be a proxy. It, it, um, it has to be an ordinary object and whose prototype could be whatever it is if you can change it yeah so that's that's the whole story about that first part any comment any any clarification any suggestion any anything <laughs> that can help us to move forward on this um i have a mild preference that there be an api that surfaces on uncaught exceptions but that's about it That would be my preference as well. You mean an, an API on on the shadow realm instance or on the sh inside the shadow realm? From within the inside shadow, shadow realm. realm. Yeah, I wouldn't object to there being also one for the outside of the shadow realm, um, but uh, yeah, one should exist. As Matthew says, it can be reconstructed at great cost from what from the global, but I'm not even sure that's possible. Uh, it's it's a uh, 
it, not not just tedious, but there's uh, how, mapping the identities is interesting. Yeah, that, definitely having inside the shadow realm helps the programs that you're running there to be able to say, I want to observe my own errors um, this way, and that helps. If it is outside only, then there has to be a coordination somehow, which is more complicated. So I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, are you also fine with the propagation from realm to realm uh, with a corresponding copy? I think that's that's entirely fine, in my opinion. Like we've already we've already said that. The, um, so we okay. There's two questions: of propagation. Uh, should you propagate onto the root realm somehow? I think yes. We've already said the root realm is um, somewhat privileged, uh, and so I don't I don't I don't think that's a problem for. Things propagate there. The question is, if you have a root realm creating a shadow realm, that shadow realm creates another shadow realm. Does it bubble through that chain, or does it go straight to the uh, to the root uh, realm? Right. And do you have? <clears throat> and while we're talking about bubbling, are we going to also have a prevent default or stop propagation? Well, I mean, there that that is part of a uh, that is already part of the event uh, error. And call it event, uh, you can prevent fault. So, yeah, if you make the global object a, a shadow, a, a, sorry, an event target internally, it will have to point to whoever the, 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 the propagation chain is going to be. I mean, to, but to be clear, this is repurposing the semantics of propagation from one that's based off of the layering of the DOM to one that's based off of the the constructor chain of shadow realms. So I mean, I think that it's it's intuitive, but it uh, it's it's uh, it's different. <laughs> and do... None of these goes into two sixty two anyways. Yeah, yeah, of course. Work, workers do it. So I if I think at that point it's a, I'm I'm fine either way. Uh, mm -hmm. If if HTML wants to pretend uh, Shadow Realm uh, is not a tree and it's a it's a flat list, I'm okay with that. Uh, if they want to reconstruct a tree, I'm okay with that too. It's probably simpler to pretend it's just a flat thing. Okay. Well, I think that this is a, has been a great conversation. Let's have the fun one now. Okay. So the, the second <laughs> part of it is. What happened with uncut um, pr um, promise uh, rejections? And in the case of the web, same principle applies. And there is an API that you can listen for those at the root window. Um, you can capture those there. Um, everything is about the same, but there is one thing that is different. And that thing is that on the event that you receive, um, when you capture the error, you also have a, 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 a value or a property value that points to the original promise that was uh, rejected. And that's where things get a little bit hairy because we don't have a mechanism for you to give you a promise. And even if we copy the promise, then you might be able to do things on that promise that might affect the other side of the equation. So we had to figure out what to do there. Um, my preference is to defer this part to um, after the, 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 the first release. Well, because there is another open issue about the possibility of copying promises the same way that we copy errors and so on when you interact across the, the callable boundary. Uh, there's an issue open for that. Um, if you are using uh, async await or any kind of um, promise-based syntax inside a shadow ROM and you interact with those through the callable boundary, today you get an error because we cannot really do much with the result, which is a promise. But if we open that up, then you might be able to um, get promises on the other side that can do the, the work for you without breaking the invariance, the invariance that we have for the, for the callable boundary. And that opens the door for this second layer of uh, of errors and control errors and so on. Well, um, 
thing is, whatever mechanism we put in place to transparently trans transfer promise or whatever you want to call that across boundary boundary is going to run into the same issues that this would have, uh, namely that. I mean, the rejection is, uh, well, the rejection usually will be an object. It doesn't, it's not always going to be an error object, uh, which technically doesn't uh, go through the global binary as is. So, um, so the, the, take a step back. The biggest problem with this API, the, there are two problems with the API. Uh, the promise object being part of the event, uh, the second thing is that uh, this is really a set of events. It's a uh, uncaught uh, rejection and then caught rejection, uh, because uh, as we all know, uh, a uncaught rejection is not final. Uh, your promise can be uh, can be handled later, uh, or unhandled for a rejection and handled reaction, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. until until it's finalized, right? So uh, yeah, but the browsers don't. Uh, Yes, but sure, this is one way where, so exactly, this is one way. So there are, there are multiple ways um, end users of those events uh, uh, might do with these. Um, one classic case is, I remember which promise was rejected. I wait some time, see if uh, that promise gets handled later. Uh, and if it doesn't, at that point, I report it um, uh, to, uh, somehow. Um, so for that, you need to be able to match the promise instance between the two events. It needs to be the same identity. Uh, another way uh, to do that is just to silence everything. Uh, and one way to uh, actually silence those things is just to add a uh, handler to the promise. Uh, it's entirely valid to do that. Um, so. Now that this is one of the special, like if you if you somehow mirror uh, into a real promise uh, on, on the uh, on the root realm, uh, if the user wants to go and add a reaction to that promise, should it go and mark that promise has handled uh, in the original shadow realm or not? The original promise is handled in the original shadow realm. Or is the promise automatically handled when it crosses the boundary uh, or when it was copied? So this is where it gets, it gets a little bit into the details of if a promise was to go through the callable boundary, what does that actually mean to go through the callable boundary? Uh, you obviously don't have the same promise uh, object anymore when you go through the callable boundary. If you handle the promise outside uh, in, in, uh, on the outside, does that mean the promise on the inside is also handled? Yeah, and so okay, a couple of comments, not directly on this, but there, there's some prior art where the promise is the promise value is set to null. Someone mentioned that in one of the box, I believe. Um, I'm I'm not entirely sure what those scenarios are, but it seems that you can have a, a event that a event that does not have direct access to the promise. It will be weird, but it's possible. This is the prior art there. Um, the, 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 the second comment is obviously that the callable boundary does not have any identity preserved in semantics. Therefore, if the same promise is rejected, uh, or I don't know, it could be that it's really not a, uh, even though the wrap function today, they have a direct reference to the original one on the other side, um, if the same function appears again, a new one will be created. In this case, if the same promise has to be reported again, then the the identity will be a different one when you copy that thing. But that uh, makes I, that makes that API completely useless. If 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 the handle if the unhandled rejection and the handled uh, rejection don't have the same promise object, uh, most cases of uh, of users of this API will not be will not function correctly. Yeah, so that's another another added problem there. If you try to do anything with the promise, if you set it to null, then then, then it's null. You don't have access to the promise. Uh, you only get a notification if something happened, but under error in this case. And if it is a, a, a data object, 
it's not a really a, a, an error itself. We're not going to be able to copy. So we'll give you an error, an additional error, which is also pretty weird. So I I I, I rather prefer to defer this saying, hey, guess what? We don't we don't really have a mechanism for this. I don't know what the workers are doing with respect to they, this. They're not, they're, not. <laughs> they're not. They're not doing anything, right? So, but that's the thing, the workers are able to handle uh, those in, inside the worker. So if we have if we have a way to handle those inside uh, the, the shadow realm, I don't then have time. Yeah, I think I think that's what we should aim for. Yeah. Saying you want to provide that inside the shadow realm as a host, be my guest, do it. And we don't we're not opposed to this, but we're not going to specify in any semantics. For for the promise to be copied at this at this time, so um, I feel that that kind of pushes to supporting both APIs inside the shadow realm and then supporting the API at the root uh, window level as a flat entry, not a tree, like a flat list, and then you get the notifications there, so you can do telemetry and other things. But that's important for error only, and that seems to be sufficient for me. To kind of unblock these these issues. Yeah, yeah. Deferring seems like a good solution for now, especially since. Well, I mean, deferring and also giving uh, giving the advice that creating a mechanism to observe unhandled rejections from within a shadow realm within it, but not transporting them to the. Uh, yeah, so we're providing an advice. Uh, the idea is to provide. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Your uh, notion is to advise HTML that we would prefer to defer the issue of whether unhandled rejections are observable in the incubator realm or a parent realm or whatever. Um, but having a mechanism so for observing them from within a shadow realm is fair game. Um, is that correct? Uh, yeah, I think the recommendation is duplicate whatever you're doing for worker. Yeah, that sounds fine. It would be really uh, so from so unhandled rejection. The unhandled rejection event is sort of uniformly dissatisfying. Um, it's, it's like I remember there was a straw poll on Twitter where where the Twitter maintainers asked the community, "What do you want to do about unhandled rejections in general?" And they were like four options posted. My advice was the unlisted option, of course, and um it's a uh, like the, the, just the notion uh, like, and, and at agoric we've run into this perpetually that the the choice between having to just like all right well we're gonna have to just drain the uh, drain the event with an uh with a null catch uh, <laughs> for every promise we create because the reality in a distributed semantics is that you're not going to observe these things locally you're going to <laughs> you're going to create connections to other to other realms and other places and then might be the, the, these promises get transported um so which which is like basically you have to choose with the current system you have to choose between having an unhandled rejection um handler that either provides too much or no information at all which depending on which avenue you choose uh, i think it would be nice if we socialized the idea of a system that actually made promise uh make the promise causal grass graph uh transparent to telemetry systems in a much more clear way where basically all of the interaction with promises including creation and all of its uh and and resolution are observable so you could actually create a so you could actually create a causal debugger <laughs> Like, like take for, I mean, because unhandled rejections is half of, half of the problem. The other half of the problem is data lock. It would be useful if a debugger could say, hey, here's a list of your pending promises. And so then you could look into your debugger and see a promise as it's created and then when it's resolved. And if it stays stays pending for too long, then that's a there's a possibility you have data lock and you'd have a prayer of finding it. Um, so that's a, it's a, it's a bigger problem. So yes, in short, let's defer. 
because we need this is an unsolved space. Okay, um, Matthew, you you want to comment on that, or you want me to comment on the issue? Um, I think I commented enough on that issue. <laughs> Maybe better for the okay. So we're, we're saying we're saying we are okay with the global update on a shadow realm to be a, a event target uh and if the host choose to do so they can do it and they can well, dispatch these I, events I, I, inside the, the the shadow realm for both errors and uh promises that's the first part i i don't know if we want to say like i, I would i would just say there needs to be a mechanism for being able to get those events inside the shadow realm, uh, whether that's directly on the global object or a property of the global object, I don't care. Uh, I probably have my preference for the for the latter, but whatever. Um, yeah, okay. it, it doesn't need to be on the global object itself. <laughs> that's what I mean. And then uh, the second part is that we we are also okay with the host. Um, Propagating the errors, the error events uh, to the root, root realm, the uh, root window in this case, uh, in the same fashion that uh, it does the poor workers. And we suggest that doing so in a flattened manner. It, that is probably simpler, yeah, to do it in a, in a, in a flat, so straight from each, any shadow realm. To the root realm without uh, going through the intermediate shadow realms that may have been there at construction. Yeah. Okay. But if they want to, if they want to reconstruct the tree, yeah. I'm fully fine yeah. with that. I'm thinking on that, yeah. Um, we're at uh, 38 minutes after the hour. Um, that gives us about 12 uh, to work with to spare. Uh, uh, do we feel like we've settled this topic? I think so. All right. Um, do you want to talk about the stain shadow realm and talk about the uh, methods of the global objects uh, issue? Um, well, yeah, I think that one is, I mean, that's outside of our control. It seems that the, someone is raising the concern that the all the changes that were made to the spec to accommodate the, the the tagging of DOM APIs to to be exposed into a shadow realm. All that work was only targeting interfaces mm -hmm. and and therefore methods of the global object were not included in that list. And there's some, some work to be done there, it seems. Um, yeah. We don't have in our case, we don't we don't have anyone to do that work at the moment. So we'll have to find out who's going to help on this. Uh, I I wasn't aware of this issue to be honest. I, 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 my assumption was that Igalia did all this work and uh, we were we were ready to go uh just tagging the different APIs, but it seems that that's not the case. Yeah, it's actually a little bit more complicated than that. Um uh, Bathos uh raised correctly that those methods of the global are actually a little bit special uh, as as we've experienced and our friend our friends at metamask have uh, uh painfully know is uh if you call a method of the global like that fetch set timeouts a to b and so on uh if you call it with a undefined receiver it works if you call it with the uh global objects uh, like the 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 host global object receiver as a receiver it works if you call it with any other uh global object it does not uh this is a problem something we've experienced in the test shim uh the test shim one of the limitation because of using with block uh when you call a uh method of the global uh the with behavior is to call use the uh the scope object as the receiver 
so that means basically any method behaves like a uh, non-strict method for the receiver there. It gets or, uh, or scope objects, which obviously doesn't match anymore the, uh, the original global objects. Uh, so if you take fetch, for example, put it in a uh, compartment global object scope, and then call uh, fetch without any receiver, all of a sudden fetch. Uh, believe the behavior. you wrong to uh, if I mean it might not be wrong for the behavior of those methods, but if that object can somehow escape back into the shadow realm, that would be the, the, the issue. Um, so I, I think this is where there's going to need to be a little bit of work on the HTML side uh, for that web IDL uh, integration because mm -hmm. the uh, magically uh, if I if if my receiver is undefined, grab the uh, platform uh, objects, uh, global object, uh, that will be the wrong thing. Yeah, um, honestly, I'm not super concerned about this. I, I think they, they can figure this out. The... It the only question is, what happened today, I, I believe I, I know the answer, but just double checking. If I use the same domain iframe today and I call fetch with the context of the outer window, not the inner, uh, it, it should work, but it will behave as the fetch of the outer window. Yes. So they, they because they have different URLs, Right. Um, it will it will assume that it's relative to the euro of the outer window because you call it with that as a context. Correct. Um, so in, in the shadow realm case, you, you you will never be able to do any of these because you'll never get another window object, another another object, global object, anyways, because of the callable boundary. So it's only your only anchor to the global window that you have inside the shadow realm, and that one has some internal. Uh, back reference to the actual root window to get yeah. a second on that. I think my main concern is let's take the fetch example. Uh, what is the identity of the response uh, uh, objects that are created? Is it based on uh, and, and those are things I don't know in, in the HTML spec, but is it based on the, the, the receiver? Uh, so is it creating? That's right. a... you, you could try that in the iframe case. Um, I bet that when you do the iframe case, the identity of the objects produced by the fetch is going to be the identity of the iframe, even though you call it with the outer window. Because the only thing that the spec, at least the, my understanding of the of the web spec, is that the only thing that it, that it does is just grabbing the settings of that object to grab the realm and create something from that realm uh, somehow. That, I, don't, that, that, I don't think it does that. I think it's just grabbing the on the line thing we can we, we can try it out really quick because it's not a but that's what i'm saying like it, it will be interesting to go through all those apis and make sure none of them uh have a behavior that went up breaking the callable boundaries uh guarantees yeah but we already have that wording on the spec so by the way, we, need, we need more reviews so we can merge all these things as soon as possible we we can we can file bugs after, but <laughs> I would pre I would prefer making sure the the spec integration is not going to break uh, the invariance we want to have on the uh, on on the yeah on on our on the XMAT two six two side. Okay, so if I grab 
the alpha name fetch. Uh, that will be content window of fetch. I get my fetch there. Okay. Now I'm going to call the global this. I'm going to call app apply. I remember the API here. And uh, global this. All right, I think that we've chased this topic to ground and uh, I propose that we close the meeting at this point. Uh, anything further? All right, thank you. That was a meeting.